Uh, I've tried to put together something interesting that encompasses the things I learned in my two parallel careers. Uh, my first career was that I was a general surgeon and trauma surgeon here in the East Bay for many, many years. I just retired in January. And my other parallel career, which was mostly reserve duty, uh, but was a fairly active reservist who has gone sometimes 12 or 14 weeks a year or more, uh, did reflect my 30 years in the uniform of the country, uh, during which time I, I learned about things other than medicine, uh, such as the role of the military and some of the other courses where I brought that information in. What I'd like to do now, given the state of the world and the fact that the news cycle is fairly disturbing on a daily basis, I am brought a couple of talks together to talk about 21st century threats. Uh, in these four talks, I, I've divided it out at the moment into four areas that I think I'm going to talk about. I'm still working on the talks. Uh, the first talk I'm going to do is to talk about just how chaos descends on you when you unsuspect it. Uh, you know, in Ukraine, nobody expected that artillery and missile strikes would start coming in on February 24th. They just didn't believe it. Most people didn't believe it. Uh, so I want to teach everybody a little bit about what to do when chaos strikes, maybe some of the basic principles of preparing yourself and your family, uh, maybe some basics about triage and some first aid, just to give you kind of a gestalt of things to think about that maybe you would want to learn going forward. This would be uh, an, you know, kind of an intro to, to learning things that you need to, to know to fill out your capabilities. Um, the second course at the moment that I'm thinking about because it's so timely is biologic threats. And, and biologic threats come from a variety of sources. Uh, we know that they can come from, uh, you know, zoonotic diseases that are transmitted from uh, animals, you know, like the avian flu uh, or current COVID SARS, which may be a lab accident. Uh, we know that there's bioterrorism is always a potential. Um, so I'm going to review some of the elements of that and talk a little bit about what our country needs to invest in to protect us from those kinds of things, because we were not prepared for COVID. We did not do very well, uh, and we need to do a lot better because it's not over. The next mutation, the next uh, variation can come any time. Um, in the third talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about future warfare, the things that the science fiction guys are working on, essentially. Uh, whoever dreamed we'd see uh, drones and robots and those kinds of things, but there is a lot more. And, and I want to introduce you to it um, to give you a view of what's being worked on and what the next series of threats might be, because the battle you're watching today in Ukraine is a World War II battle with tanks and artillery. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there are unmanned aerial vehicles. There are uh, things happening using satellites. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that you need to be aware of just to understand what the future war might look like. Uh, and then the last one, um, bringing in today's current events, I'm going to review the, probably the top 10 friction zones in the world and tell you what worries me. Uh, because even though we're focused right now on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is a war, by the way, and, and not a special military operation, um, we need to be cognizant of the fact that there's trouble on the India-Pakistan border, that North Korea is still launching missiles, that China is still hovering over Taiwan, that the Iranians are causing mischief in the Middle East, of course, and are having conflict with the Saudis, that there's civil wars going on uh, all over North Africa and the Middle East, Syria, Libya, whatever. Um, this stuff is a threat to all of us in a sense, because you never know when it could spill over one way or another. So that's probably where we'll take that fourth talk. Uh, as always, I'm very open to emails before and after the lectures uh, and to questions during the lecture. I see my job, uh, like my friend Malcolm Nance says, is to be the uh, explainer in chief. I, I know some things that I wanna share with you that maybe you don't know, or maybe give you a different way of looking at it. And my job is to connect the dots and kind of present it to you. And this will be kind of a new area for us to get into. I think everybody will enjoy it who does, although you may lose a few nights of sleep as students have told me when I've given these lectures before. Thank you.